our first guest today um, is Maria. So um, Maria is an eco activist uh, who believes that Mother Nature is indeed Mother Nature and uh, it's a human being. It's a living being, okay, not human being, living being. And uh, she dedicates uh, her actions and her work to saving the earth. And hi, Maria. <laughs> Hi, nice to see you and nice to see all the our viewers that are joining us. It's an amazing day. Today is a day like we, uh, we all should be part of this, of this process of changing because we all have a human being being connected with Mother Earth. We will understand better the problem and we will not just join and uh, put our words into actions because that's what we need, you know? So, um, so uh, for me, I did my homework before meeting you, so I read uh, everything about the area of your research, but for our viewers, uh, it would be useful to learn about you more. So could you introduce yourself and tell us about the work you do and the, your area of uh, research? Hello, my name is Maria Jose. I am from Ecuador. Uh, like half Ecuadorian, half Colombian, but I'm from a small ethnic group, which is called Otavaleños. It's one of the main ethnic groups in Ecuador. Um, so I am doing my research. I uh, finished my master in Russia in the higher school of economics in um, public policy and political analysis with the frame in human rights. So I have been working in uh, and researching and the field of food sovereignty, food security, and right to food, and how this is connected with gender equality. So that's how I um, was uh, doing my research in India. I don't know if you have heard about Bandana Shiva, which is like a leader who is like uh, leading um, a huge campaigns in India, in the north, and in the south against the transnational, co the transnational companies and also against genetic modified organisms. Yeah, I don't know if I should have to explain what is that because uh, there are basically uh, one of the main things that the eco feminist movement all over the world is doing is promoting the idea that we should all. Um, recover the ways of the agricultural way of our ancestors so like protecting the seeds protecting the water protecting our soil being more connected with the earth in agricultural process and also understanding that we are also that our land our mother earth is a being and we as a being should be connected with uh, more connected with the with the earth and and, and the, at this point we will just feel what the pain that the mother earth is feeling and we will try to reduce the way of consuming the way of wasting and the way of understanding in more holistic way that is a concern that involves all of us um, all this research is uh, involved in a, an eco-feminist approach an eco-feminist approach is connect two things two important things which is feminism and environmentalism and what it is. Where, where is the connection? Why? It's because um, it's simple. Let me explain you from a simple point of view. Like why women are more connected with Earth and what, what with the pain that the Mother Earth is uh, having now because of our intentions and because we as a woman have uh, have the gift to give lives to the world. So we have the. Uh, we give lives, so has Mother Earth give the food to us, so we are emotionally more connected with the process of growing, with the process of being like um, being a source of life. So that's why many of the research that we, many of the researchers that are involved in feminism have come to the idea that there is an oppressive and a patriarchal. Uh, connection conceptual connection between what is happening with the issue of concern with equality in and inequality and equity in the world and they are relatively connected with the domination of the patriarchal and economical system with what is happening with the mother earth and the natural resources and dominated by the capitalist by the capitalistic ideas for example as i said before that why we should um, modify the seed why we should use pesticides that are destroying the health of many people, let's say in the case of India, 
So what the movements are doing, like the women movements are doing, is protecting the, protecting the rainforest in the same way that the indigenous people are protecting the forest in the Amazon. So what if, I don't know if you know the case of Brazil, Ecuador, Peru, there are uh, most of the group of the indigenous groups are being needed by women because women are if we see the statistics now that who is leading uh, these uh, who is leading the process of uh, awakening people in the street like going doing like um, empowering more people in the street saying like you should all fight for what is happening now in the world you should reduce the feeling you should feel the pain of the mother or, and you should go and I don't know uh, find methods to protect our environment in a simple way so that that's why I, I got really involved on this since I start thinking that it's true because you remember uh, our grandmothers or mothers they always say to us if they cook something for us they say like don't waste this food don't leave anything you should eat everything or don't do this and like, they are all the things and the unconscious are connected with this thing of not wasting food, like protecting the resources. Um, I don't know, like is is something more emotional that connects us with the mother earth because we, the women, are feeling more what is happening in this in in this chaotic environmental problems that we are having now. So that's why we can ask you. And basically, the research was conducted to understand how ecofeminist approach is leading the climate change. So uh, the main question is the role of women understanding the uh, environmental crisis and also involving the question of gender equality because most of the women that are working in land, they have not the right to own the land that they are working in. For example, let's say the case of African countries, for example, Kenya, Tanzania, most of them they are just slaves working uh, as a part of the of family uh, process let's say they are working and they are not owning land resources and they are not aware that they should be treated as a uh, you know as a land workers but they should have the right to own their own resources so it's a way also to empowering women and all this way of uh, thinking and acting and you know I don't know if you can be able to hear me properly because I'm really trying. To no, 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 we can hear you. Yes, we can hear you. It's fine. So my question is, um, with all this vision and the ideas you have, how, I mean, how did you end up in um, Russia doing master's degree in the uh, higher economies school? How did that happen? How do you get from Ecuador to uh, Russia? It is just uh, amazing because... Uh, it's more personal stuff. I just came to Russia because I wanted to study Russian language, but it was a long ago. And then I finished my bachelor, and then eventually I just found a master program because I didn't want to leave Russia. So now I'm leaving Russia. But, and then I found this program, and I was really involved. I found my, um, let's say, my guru, the person who, we, who is helping me doing research. She's my tutor, my thesis tutor. So, and then it was really connected because from the beginning I decided that I'm going to work in ecofeminism. So I did my internship in India and everything was really connected. Also helping and volunteering in Amnesty International made me think I participated in one uh, the social forum in San Petersburg like a couple of months ago. And then understanding also the Russia is a country that is also suffering from envi for environmental problems. But there are many people that are voiceless. For example, let's say in Novosibiria and Siberia are many groups led by women that are like doing activism, protecting the forest, and also uh, doing many activities from the way they can because you know in Russia it's like a little bit complicated to do activism, but there are many people, many groups, many uh, women that are leading the process and Russia doesn't know about it and it's really interesting. So I had a chance to, uh, to talk with uh, ladies from the, I don't know how to say, it's like Karatskaya Academia in Novosibirsk. 
like students in Skagaratskaya Academia and they wanted to like build another luxury uh, like dorm for people that are doing research there and they are completely against because uh, they should all protect the forest there but uh, they are voiceless because people don't, do not understand uh, why they should all fight for that why this is a question that concerns all of us so in, in Russia, these ecological uh, concerns are really not that developed. Uh, but I see that my classmates, many of the people with whom I talk, they are like getting involved in this because it is important. And Russia is like a really big country, huge country with a lot of uh, natural desert, beautiful landscapes. I had the chance to travel around Russia and like get more in love, in love, in love, in love with the country. And then for me, I really wanted to do more research about Russia but you know because of the lack of uh, this uh, disponibility of the people like you know it has to be done properly like but going to Nova series that is like, kind of complicated especially if they are scared of sharing um, their own experience because the government is taking actions against the activism against people that are going to the meetings in the streets so it's like really complicated but I would like to do something um, because I see that Russia is a country that is, is waking up now definitely is it's like the civil society in Russia like let's say like the thing that you are doing now like um, making people understand that this is a concern that involves all of us and it, it, and it is important for you as a student me as a like whatever I am like let's say I am researched but I don't consider myself like a, like a researcher as a person who is trying to like go to the place, see, understanding the situation and trying to involve all of this in a more holistic approach that I can share it more simply like because there is that involve my not just my professional career, like my personal career is like to involve gender issues with ecological issues in one point that we can understand that we should develop a language and that and we we should develop a path and a language to connect all these concerns in one because at the end of the day the main problem that our uh, lesser or planet is facing is like the issues relatively connected with gender problems also because of what because of the patriarchal and the capitalist system that we are involved in so if we're understanding more in, in a more sense language and we are putting it into practice if we will understand that the environmental issues are also a gender question. Okay, yeah, I see. So uh, uh, in a way you can say that um, in Russia as well there are women, there are people who are engaged in ecofeminism, right? They do the, yeah. the job, yeah. But is there do, do they identify themselves with the movement? Is there a movement uh, that unites all those people? Have you no, in Russia, met? unfortunately, no. People do know about what ecofeminism is. They do understand what, uh, like, the connection between what I explained before. So they know, but they, you know, women are afraid. I am feminist. Russia, you know, mm -hmm. that. So they. They will say like yes, I'm environmentalist. I am doing that, but they like hardly recognize yes, I am a feminist because of the because you know it's like a really traditional society where you may judge because of like expressing your voice and rising up your ideas and your identity. Like you know this question about identity in Russia is really like a hard thing know better than me the problems regarding mm -hmm. to the question of identity put it in big words so mm -hmm. people who do not I am ecofeminism even if they do all the things that uh, but you, we should not define anyway we should not define what we are that I am doing this because I'm feminist I'm doing this because I'm socialist I'm doing this because I, this is a this is a concern that sometimes divide us instead of unifying our ideas because sometimes we don't identify ourselves with any idea and ideology but we are just trying to help you know trying to like get involved in this uh, situation and put our ideas into actions that is better than say yes i am this i am that and, and, and you know 
Yeah, because in the end, it's more important to actually do that stuff rather than to like identify with an ideology and not do anything, right? Yeah, but which I, identity is also important. So just, but uh, I say now, nowadays, you mean just like the way of of helping the world and the environmental crisis is just unifying all the ideas and putting into action. It doesn't matter if I am from this movement and I'm from this community and I'm from this background and I'm from, I have this ideology. So I just have a goal, which is like uh, care about Mother Earth. And because we call in Spanish, and like Pachamama, not in Spanish, in Quechua, in the native language of the indigenous people, like Pachamama, so it's just like translated into, into English is gonna be like Mother Earth. So we're caring about our mother era that is giving us everything we are. Yeah. Okay. So you're saying that it is actually important to create the community and the movement that people could gather around, not just separately doing their things, right? Yeah, it is important not to put it into to either, to like let's say to define like I am from this I I have this ideology, but I have the same goal. Sometimes it's more like to unify the goals that we have and go together for it, mm -hmm. you know. Because there are people from different ideologies can be together and do great things. And it's better because diversity is what can like lead to peace building, to create new spaces of participation in more diversity, accepting and being tolerant uh, with each other because there is also a question of tolerance, like of, uh, uh, let's say, it is beautiful when you accept that people are coming from different parts of the world with different ideas, with different cultures, religions, but they have the same goal. So sometimes it's just a question of unifying goals and just working, having environmental ethics, you know. we there Another question of oh, that ecofeminist tries to record is having environmental ethics. So what is this? Like trying to be more aware about like what am I doing here as a human being? Why? What is my mission? So I'm just here because of the air is free. So I just have no. This is what is my mission here as a human mm -hmm. being? Now it's like a big question for all of us. We are gonna be involved in this way of changing the course of the climate crisis. Uh, it's just to be involved. I can do it like from home. I can just start thinking more aware about the way I consume, reducing, and you know, like with the small actions we can change it, like reducing the way of consuming beef, meat, because also of, uh, like in Russia, it's like really come, like you ha will have like it really many questions when you say, yes, I'm vegetarian, so I don't eat beef meat, but why do you need to eat the red meat because of winter and because of this, because of that? Because it's called, there are many stereotypes about the way of, like, you decide to live. And, but it's just, there are many, many, many things that we can do for helping the, the earth nowadays. Mm -hmm. So okay. it it's is not necessary for yeah. us to have, a, like, to have, let's say, to compare. I know many Russians that from their own places where the small, tiny houses are doing great things like recycling and like they're really thinking like yeah I, I, we should do this because Russia does not have like ecological consciousness but we should do it and we should start it and spread it to others so because yeah you cannot go to the street and do a meeting because sometimes it's really useless at the same time so it's just because it's more participation civil society but it's, sometimes small actions from home will help you know mm -hmm. Yeah. Actually, it's funny that you mentioned that uh, it, with the uh, diversity uh, of people coming from different religions and backgrounds uh, united by goal comes peace, because actually you defined uh, the UWC mission. That's what UWC schools and the movement does, because they take a lot of people from diverse, really diverse backgrounds, and they uh, just live together and strive for the better future. So I have a question. Um, yeah. What can be what actions can be taken uh, to uh, awaken um, the people to create 
a community. I mean, uh, you mentioned that it's important to have that uh, network and to have that identity uh, and uh, the sense of uh, participation. So what can be done in a society? Because it's, it's not just Russia. There are many countries so that, that they do, do not have the environmental outlook that there are separate people who do the recycling, who do the reusable uh, everything in their life. But as a society as a whole, it doesn't identify uh, itself with an eco society. So what actions can be taken actually to build a community and to make it more systemic, if I can say, the approach? More systemic. Actually, I had the question also on how to create a systemic uh, way of thinking and the concern in all the brains of the people all over the world in general the humanity and my question was then how to make the humanity more human you know it's like how how, how you can touch like uh, because what is happening what the social media is sharing now yeah many climate catastrophic things all over the world they it is just simple, you know, sharing and spreading and not being afraid of saying, okay, you know, we should do this, we should work together on this, like spreading to all, because it starts from your friends' community. So if you have the chance to spread it, to spread the way you think, like being more aware about the way you are living and spreading those ideas with your friends, where you're a small community, and this is going to generate like, the question, because this is the one of the things that we should all work in like create uh, the hypothesis like that will involve all the people let's, let's say i will say to my mom so i don't do this because i think that what i'm doing is affecting my life my health and it's also affect, affecting the health of the mother earth in which i am living in because connecting our way of living with the way of other people's caring about other people's life also and understanding that we are not alone here and it's not just our lives, it's our ancestors, it's we as a being now and also the future generation. So being more, because we are really selfish, right? We just think about ourselves and there are like, was when I went to this internship in India, actually we were like working in the land, like sowing herbacin and understanding that soil is being, so it's a sentient being that uh, is giving lives. Plants are like, they have the same like process of reproducing as a woman, as, a, as we as a being, so we really understand that all the beings um, here and that we are really connected to each other. So I'm spreading the question about like, I should do something better for my life and for others' life and spreading into first in your friends' community and the people who think they are gonna do something for change and spreading it as a change, you know, and it is gonna be like a change. Now we are generating more conscious about like, yes, we should like, like we should do something right now. Because climate change is something that is it's going really fast. It's going really fast. Everybody talks about it, but no one feel it. What no one feel it, you know. That's what happened in many aspects. We are talking about sustainable, integral sustainability. So we should not just work about sustainability and you know, a more integral process, like involving economics, politics, sociology, human rights, environmental questions, involving all of these that we can just go into a sustainable way of living, understanding basic meanings, because everybody talks about it and no one feel it, no one feel what is that, you know? That's the main problem that's in, uh, that I think, you know, we should just feel more, because when we feel that this is my problem, I became less selfish, because this is not just something concerned to me, it's my family, is my community, is my city, is my country, is my planet. You know, we should empower ourselves. Like as a small being connected with the beautiful planet we have and just doing something. That's it. But, but feeling first because if we don't feel tomorrow, if you are just emotion, uh, emotional and, and also like 
where it's just like really emotional. Yes, I will do this, I will do that, but I don't really feel it inside. Go and will do this. I will go and plant a tree. I will go and collect seeds from my house. I will go and just go, I don't know, to the dacha and go with my babushka and I understand like, because there are many, you see the dacha things in Russia, there's also a, the, every single babushka have a, has an echo soul, even if you see the matryoshkas, like, because I had many explanations of what a matryoshka is and then, it's like every single babushka has the garden. There's like, that people don't understand, like, Every single Russian Bauschka have a really huge ecological like soul, like eco soul that they just like to do these. They grow the arborsi and everything and just spread and eat their own tomatoes and and it's beautifully something that for example my grandmother doesn't do it in Latin America. So in Russia there is this mm-hmm. there is, you know, it's intrinsically connected with Russian culture. But no one feels no one feels it, you know? And this is just like opening our eyes and singing because if I go as a granddaughter to my grand my, my grand I wanted to say Bauska again. If I go and it's like it's boring, you know? It's boring just to go to that and it's boring. But I had many friends that I learned from them that it's really important, you know, to go to Sunday, Sunday for us, the food. So it's like there is there is the many ways that, that I see that Russia is also really like natural like really like I, I don't know how to explain it but I feel that no my generation like previous generation this is like really connected with the mother earth really really connected especially with Bauschkas they are just like so natural lovers so there is so we should just feel it all we need to call this is a call for all or our generation to work on feeling the pain of the mother earth of the land and just work on what should we do as a as a human being to protect what is not just others problem but it's just my problem also because me as a human being who feels I, I, sh- I should care about it because I should care about the food I'm eating. I should care about the water I'm drinking. I should care as well about the food that others don't have the access to, you know? Because there's like food security was also food sovereignty connecting the goal of zero hunger in the world. So. And, and this the imbalance in the way that there are many people who have a lot of food and there are people not eating food, you know? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, Maria, do you have role models that you aspire to be like in the in this area? Yeah. I have, um, uh, yes, many, like uh, from, uh, let's say, nowadays I have like one lady i really like not just follow i really love like this is vandana shiva dr vandana shiva she's the one who's like creating awareness in india and working with all this process and i also like have academical uh gurus that has my future researcher like doing many things also from her space and i have in latin america also ada uh, ada falacio it's also working with the process there, but um, many of the models that I'm following, they are not in internet, they have no website, and they are just voiceless. I say just because they're the indigenous women in the, in the Amazon region, indigenous women from my indigenous groups, that they are doing really great. Uh, even if no one knows and talk about it, uh, I, I hope someday I will be able to talk about it and then they are doing great things to protect the land and also to protect the ancestral tradition of working in, in organic process of um, doing uh, or, or sowing food and collecting seeds and everything i think it, i think it's important because when i say when i talk about seeds i had a discussion a couple of days ago when i say yes i we should just be against genetically modified organisms in the seeds, GMOs, 
because it's something that is killing people. The same way we are killing environment and environment is killing us because we are not aware about the things we are eating and no one understands it. And they say like, yes, but what you are talking about is so ridiculous because if there are no genetically modified organisms, there is not enough food for feed the whole planet, you know? It's like the way we are ignoring ignorance is the root of all the problems also we are having. Then we just talk because we hear something in TV and was like that, but we just like say yes, yes. and we follow the thing yes, and we just do this because we are just again no feeling what is the problem. Mm -hmm. so that's my main thing. Uh, that I would like to say with all my heart to everybody that is looking at we should just feel these environmental problems and understand that they are our own problems and just okay. do something about I it. I see. Yeah. And about like, doing, yes, my last question would be like two things briefly, two things every person should and can do uh, to do something good for the earth. Like what, what would be your go to advice two things that I, I as a person can do uh, for the earth and for myself and for the future what would that be yeah plant a tree everybody say like collect the seeds like for you eat you know before you buy things mm -hmm. um, go to because something that i did before you know mm -hmm and mm -hmm. see what is behind it, you know? Think about the story of what is this food I'm putting in my plate, you know? Okay. Feeling that, because I, I had the thing about what we eat is, what I eat is what I, uh, I am, right? Mm -hmm. Like thinking before buying, because we produce many things just on the way we are feeding ourselves, you know? And having, I'm not saying go vegan or go vegetarian. No, 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 no. We should just have like, a, I don't know, a Mediterranean Mediterranean diet. Like trying to be more sustainable. From Don't pretend and don't even try to like follow the trends and the fashional, fashional. Today is so fashion to be sustainable, to be environmentalist, to care about Mother Earth, to be like that. Just think about it that... Uh, I will just do it from my house, you know. I will just see what I'm eating, live, try to live sustainable, try to uh, try to understand all all of this environmental crisis as a crisis that is happening in my house. And as soon as it will happen, we will see like, yes, I can change it. Because you know, when we are, you are sick, you go and you find a medicine and you do something, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. Now, now we see. don't need this. After now we is the, now we need antidotes to this. We need to prevent, try to prevent, try to prevent, because that's because it's very important it's for really all of us wrong. and every each of us. Yeah. yeah okay, Maria. So thank you. No, thank you very much. Now we we'll leave you to have rest and catch your next I flight. Hope, you're right. I hope this is gonna reach. And we are going to be able to spread the message from. That's the hope. Thank you. That's beautiful that you are there. Thank you. And good Made luck. in Russia. Congrats. Yeah, bye. Okay, bye. Bye.